In 2022, I made what is probably the only Maglev 4x4 I was able to find on the internet. What made the Maglev 4x4 so special is that it overcomes a major limitation of even cube mechanism. An even cube is basically just an odd cube with a hidden middle layer and to prevent this middle layer from turning on its own and jamming the entire cube, the core has to be built asymmetrically to latch onto only one of the two layers that are pretty much mirrors of each other. This is known as an alignment mechanism, and the most common one is known as the X-Cube or X-B-Mac. Two main things we want out of Maglev. The first is force versus compression. Springs obey Hooke's law, so the more you squish them, you get a proportionate force back in return. Magnets, on the other hand, follow an inverse square curve that is gentle at first but gets progressively steeper. So you can pretty much get a cube that feels faster when the magnets are further apart, that is when everything is properly aligned, and then when you corner cut, which is when things get closer together, magnet repulsion force gets much stronger and it will feel more like a stable cube. The second and more easily understood benefit of maglev is the reduced friction, because the top and bottom of where the spring would be are no longer touching each other, and this is the main problem with adding maglev to even cubes. XB mac latches on from the top, and because of that, like this bump, has to link itself to the core, in order to permanently stay at the same position. This changes the contact point, it's no longer between the screw and the rest of the cube, but between this immovable circle and this movable square, it's also impossible to build a stockless center. And therefore this entirely takes out the frictionless benefit of maglev. The alternative is the Ishin mag, which uses a big block that latches from the bottom, but this means that the first layer must be shallower than the second, making it incompatible with modern cube mag, where the first layer is deeper than the second. I made my own mechanism that somewhat hybrids the two, achieve a stockless center, and a deep mag where the first layer is deeper than the second. The maglev 4x4 is probably one of the best FDM printed puzzles I've made. It's very fast and effortless to turn, and the flow between layers is good. However, there's one major thing I didn't like about it, which was it's really unstable and it felt really flimsy, so I sought to make version 2. In order to improve the stability of the cube, we want a bigger mechanism. And this is where we encounter a big problem with the V1. The ring magnets just take up a lot of space and a huge column is just dedicated to contain them and therefore the rest of the mechanism is squished under the two magnets, just like how the MGC 5x5 squished its entire mechanism under a spring. And for a start, I suppose a rounded screw head. I went with a flat one instead to save up a bit of space. Then I stole an idea from my maglev 5x5 that I made. In an earlier part of 2022, this build is intended to make use of the empty space between the two magnets, and it has a hole at the bottom of the center to glue the magnet in. And with this concept, I could move the floor from below the magnets to between the magnets, saving a bit of space. And finally, the core of the V2 is just smaller than the V1, which allows more vertical height to the mechanism. And while each one of these changes only makes up for a small difference, they do add up to give the V2 a much more normal looking proportion, as opposed to the very squished and short look of the V1. And also, just because I like the look, I made the top anchor of the V2 hollow, just like it is on the Uchiha. Another way to buff up the stability is to increase the power of the core corner magnets. This is a system that pulls the corner to a position that is defined relative to the core, as opposed to a neighbouring piece. The V1 features an octahedral core which means it's not fully maximising the highest height where this magnet can be relative to the motion path of all the outer layer pieces which is circular in nature. And the V2 features a ball core that precisely maximises that. The distance between the core and the corner is so close they almost touch each other. The V2 is also built with an RS3 mag, similar to how the Fin 4x4 did it, which and that is to put a square tip at the base of the center piece. When the other pieces ride over it, it's as stable as riding over a square piece, yet the reverse corner cutting is not compromised because the corner base is hollowed at the same height at where this square tip would be, so it should reverse corner cut right through. On the V1, due to the necessary half hit of the 5x5 piece that contain the maglev system, I took the opportunity to use the magnet layout of a 5x5, but this actually created a problem which is the distance the magnet is from the center of rotation is shorter which reduces the stopping power of the magnets. With the V2 it just reverted back to the layout of a regular 4x4. An interesting thing about both cubes is they all use the same magnet variety throughout. With the V1 you don't have a double strength in the magnets because it's just the magnet layout of the 5x5. With the V2 it uses a standard 4x4 layout which means that the inner layers have to be doubled. However, I actually avoided double strength inners because of the distance between the magnets. So both of these are built with a magnet slot which puts two walls between the two magnets here. Whereas with the outer layer, the corner has a magnet slot while the edge is just press fit so there's only one wall in between. And this actually almost overcorrects the problem because if you look at the corner slots, at first glance it looks like 
fork ESL and Meiying where there's a very big hole but actually this hole is designed totally differently it's basically just a vertical slot so you can see it's actually solid from this side but hollow from this side and the hole is actually much bigger than the magnet because I originally wanted to put in a bigger magnet but I found that it overcorrected, so I just reverted back to the same magnets. The distance seems very little, but actually if you look at the Coulomb's law, like distance is raised to the power of 2. And as an irrelevant side note, the anti-stick design of both the V1 and V2 of the maglev 4x4 are modeled after the Kong's design made in 3x3. That 3x3 actually had a track going all the way around the edge, and is quite prominent on the V1. The V2 tried to top this by putting a 2 stripe, but going all around the edge or so, but Due to the layer lines of the 3D printing, it became less obvious on this. On the corner is even more obvious because the original Mei Ying featured a diamond shaped hole here and you can see that this hole is also present in both versions of the maglev 4x4. Additionally, the V2 is meant to include repelling edge magnets but I've yet to install it given how strong the ball core is already. There were a lot of problems in piecing the original cube together mainly because designed to ought to even cube conversion plastic shells to glue on top of a 3x3 core and the original 3x3 core that I was using is actually defective and one of the screws was already on its path to unscrewing itself plus the original magnets that I wanted to use were way too strong and too thick to make assembly even possible and I had an extra chi sail core lying around and I just reprinted the two odd to even conversion shells over that other 3x3 core which is why the cube currently has a black core but if you look at older pictures of it there's a white core. Additionally, since the magnets were too thick, I actually stole some magnets from a more tri Tianma X3. This used to be the triple magnetic version, where right under this screw and this spring, there's actually a very big and very flat magnet at the base, and it's actually extremely hard to take out. I actually took a pile of ring magnets and stuck it to the bottom, and then I gradually wiggled my way out. Sometimes it's so difficult to even take it out, I First, poured some nail polish remover, and then I just waited it for a while to dissolve any glue. Then after that, I will do the operation of sticking the magnet in and slowly pulling it out. And while I did manage to take out all six of the very thin ring magnets, I actually broke one of them, and I don't have any spare, so I ended up gluing it back together. It's all permanently glued to the screw. In theory, it should make it weaker because of... Like, now it's no longer one big magnet, it's three smaller magnets. However, I have yet to notice the difference in strength. And the Mo Tri Tianma isn't actually destroyed. It's still fully functional, it's just reduced to the double magnetic version. Assembly of this cube is also quite a complicated issue. So for most beginners, the hardest part of assembling a 4x4 is putting together the first two sets of internal pieces onto the core. As of now, I probably have more than 10 years of experience doing this, and uh, I can assemble a 4x4 under 5 minutes. and Jacob Cubing can assemble one under 3 minutes, but the game changes entirely when the 4x4 is built around the stockless center concept, because now there's nothing holding those center pieces down, and they are free to move up. And this is where I took some inspiration from the Da Yan Ne Zha packaging, and I printed a ring that is similar to one of the halves of the plastic. So that half of the plastic box have a bunch of grooves, and likewise in this ring, and the grooves actually fit exactly with the middle layer of the cube. So this allows for the core to be assembled on top and then the first half of the cube is assembled like the second half of the cube which is the easier part of the assembly and after that you can just flip it around and take out the ring and assemble the second half of the cube. Final result is a cube that's actually a lot more stable than the V1. The cube feels overall much tighter with more force resisting it when you try to deform and also the force that pushes the cube back after you deform it is also quite noticeable as opposed to the V1 where it actually still stays deformed after I force it. The ball core of the V2 is also much more prominent as compared to the V1. In fact, the V2 feels quite a lot like the X-Men Hong 5x5, where you actually take more effort to do the first half of the turn and less effort to finish off the turn. However, I also did experience quite a lot of random catches. This might reduce with breaking in. After all, breaking in a 3D printed puzzle is very different from breaking in a mass produced puzzle. Like with a mass produced puzzle, I think just doing a bunch of source would do, but 3D printing, because of firstly the material quality and secondly also the layer based nature, you have to break it into the point where the layer lines are not even obvious on every single rounded part of the foreign hole. Uh, this is just my theory. The V1 when it's fresh out of the printer is also nowhere as good as what it is right now. I think you can scroll back to the video and. 
I definitely don't think I could TPS it like like I do now. The V2 is also slightly bigger than the V1 due to a size change that I made during the design process. This is actually done to prevent certain pieces from becoming too thin, but I actually completely forgot that I did this. And when I printed the pieces, I thought they printed inaccurately and they were too big, but actually when I went to check the files, there was nothing wrong with the size. This puts the V2 at 59mm in comparison to the V1 at 58 I still think 58 is the better size of the two, but 59 still works fine. And so overall, I'm not very satisfied with the result of the V2. I do wish it had been better, and I don't think the 3D printer actually managed to do the mechanism justice. But at the same time, I also think there's more hope from, for the V2 than what it currently is right now, because I do think it, the break-in isn't really completely done, and I do think the puzzle might improve some more.